Welcome to BCH Technologies. Today, we're going to show you how to review an Epson cartridge. Before we start, there is some homework to do. Let's start with the cartridge. The printer stores the number of pages printed on a computer chip, which is located at the front of the cartridge. Our ho first homework is to learn how to reset a page number back to zero. Otherwise, the printer will not recognize the new ink level. So you refill a cartridge, uh, but the cartridge is still empty. So to reset that page number, you need something called Resetter. And we have a video of uh, resetting the chip. Uh, you can find it on our YouTube channel. The second homework is how to unclog the printer. We might be using a new ink or even switching from a pigment to dye ink. Furthermore, the refill activity may introduce air bubbles, which blocks the printhead. Knowing how to unclog is very useful. There are many videos on how to unclog the printhead. We may add some more later too. By the way, we have a special adapter uh, to remove air bubbles out of cartridge. You can go to www.bchtechnologies.com and go to uh, Accessories and Refill Tools. And there's this uh, plastic needles. You put a, the adapter in front of syringe and uh, you push the uh, adapter inside the uh, a cartridge and draw air out. However, if you have a syringe and just use syringe, it's just as good. Let's take a closer look at the cartridge design. On top of the ink outlet, we have something called one way damper. This damper will make the ink flow one way from the cartridge to the outlet. If you try to inject ink from the outlet into the cartridge, it will not work. One of our competitors sells a refill tube for $200. They claim that uh, the device will let you inject ink backward. After paying the money, they will send us a 20 ml syringe. Then they'll tell us to push air really hard into the cartridge until the damper's membrane is fractured. So when you fracture the membrane, you can inject the ink backwards. We don't have a 20 mil syringe here, but we have a 10 mil syringe. We can offer this syringe for half the price, $100, if anybody is interested. Also, we have a bridge in Brooklyn for sale. Let's try to fracture the membrane, see how hard it is. I just want to try some new method. There you go. There's your fracture, fracture membrane. <laughs> okay, let's focus on nonviolent refills. Our goal is to add ink to the cartridge. Uh, let me take the cartridge cover off first. There are three major chambers in the cartridge. When you add ink to chamber two, it will flow to chamber one. However, the cartridge needs some ink in chamber three, so the printer can detect ink from the little window underneath the cartridge. In this, in this tutorial, we took off the cover and uh, we also use a transparent cartridge to show you the progress. In a real refill, you don't need to take off the cover or the, you, you, you don't need to have a transparent cartridge. However, if anybody interested in uh, how to make a transparent cartridge like this, and you just follow our YouTube video. We're going to make a video about how to make this. It's pretty cool. 
Okay, you can use any size of drills. Smaller drill holes can be covered with a tape or hot glue. Epson has an air vent on top, so it doesn't matter if you make it airtight or not. If you don't have a drill, um, you can actually use a scissor top. Just use a scissor to drill through it. It really doesn't matter. Uh, just to plug in some of our product, we also sell 3 millimeter drills and plugs if anybody interested. Yeah, just go to our website and uh, the drills should be under accessories and refill tools. And it should be on the bottom. There's the 3 millimeter drill. And also the plug is under accessory plug. Um, by the way, the green plugs works better for the 3 millimeter drill. Now we add a 10 mil of ink into the cartridge. If you have a squeeze bottle kind, you can add a third of uh, the bottle. Uh, the squeeze bottle is 30 mil. And you can see the ink naturally coming uh, from chamber 2 and flow into chamber 1. Now we use the thumb to put some pressure on chamber 3, squeeze it, let the air come up, and let the ink flow down to chamber 3, so the ink can cover the window. Uh, by the way, um, because you're going to work this through the cover, the absence cover is very soft, so you can squeeze it without any trouble. So we can add more ink if we want. And the Epson calls for 12 mils, and uh, it doesn't matter if you add 10 mil or 15, it doesn't matter. There may be concerns that the chamber 3 is not totally full, and this is okay. Let us simulate the printing process. We're going to draw ink from the outlet and simulate the printing, the printers consuming ink. So you can see chamber 1 is the first one to get emptied. Now, the chamber 2 provides ink, okay? Some chamber, some from chamber 2 flow to chamber 3, and the little window is still covered. And now chamber 2 is empty, and now number 3 is empty. Therefore, you don't have to fill all the chambers. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, please check out our video about how to Reset the, the page number so you can get a full ink level reading from the printer and also follow us on YouTube channel so you can get updated when we make the uh, the unclog uh, oh, that sounds bad uh, the, the unclog uh, videos um, also visit us online at www.bchtechnologies.com we're going to have the bridge that we mentioned in Brooklyn for sale. Also, we probably put a $100 syringe on there too. Thank you. Bye.